If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Good morning. I'm, I'm recording a front-facing sermon and trying to do it quickly uh, because I, w- I wanted a little, little practice on the sermon, honestly. And also, uh, I try to do these when I can. I know the sound is just better and still trying to work out kinks with the live stream. So uh, let's pray and uh, listen to some words from God today. Ever-living God, your eternal Christ once dealt, dwelt on earth confined by time and space. Give us faith to discern in every time and place the presence among us of him who is head over all things and fills all, even Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord. Amen. I'm going to read two texts from Kings, one from 1 Kings, one from 2 Kings, one a miracle of Elijah and one a miracle of Elisha, his uh, successor, his protege, um, So let's read these words. This is 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. But after a while, the wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. And here's Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat, for thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. If you were able to watch last week's live stream or if you were in church, you might be thinking, he did it backwards. Last week in church, we read both accounts from Mark of Jesus feeding multitudes, both the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000, which both happen in Mark. And so this week, suddenly we're going back to the Old Testament to miracles that sound kind of like what Jesus did, but kind of are small potatoes compared to his big miracles. Jesus fed uh, thousands of people with a couple loaves of bread. Well, Elijah fed one family, let the the grain and oil uh, was able to multiply every day. And Elisha fed a hundred and he fed them with 20 loaves. Jesus' miracles seem so much bigger, and they come later. But I wanted to read these two today for several important reasons. 
First, <laughs> this is a great reminder that the Old and New Testament are not in conflict. There is no Old Testament God and New Testament God. God doesn't change. But perhaps we come to understand the God of the Hebrew Bible uh, more deeply in the life of Jesus Christ. It's the same God of grace and forgiveness and uh, a God who is compassionate for those who are suffering uh, in both Testaments and throughout the whole of Scripture and throughout the whole of history. These, these miracles of Elijah and Elisha are not just precursors to Jesus or sound kind of like Jesus. They are miracles that are supposed to echo in our ears. History rhymes. And uh, we see the miracles of Jesus reflected throughout the Old Testament, especially in First and Second Kings, but throughout. And I believe um, we see the miracles of Jesus then echoed in the Acts of the Apostles and, and in the history of the church that has followed uh, Christ's death and resurrection. These, these small potatoes miracles are reminders that God has always been at work, that Jesus Christ, his life and death and resurrection are the center of history, are the key events, but that God has always been at work doing the same feeding, clothing, healing, salvation, all the things that God does in Jesus Christ, God has always been doing and always will do. God is always at work, not just in the life of Jesus. The other thing that feels very important to me when I read these two miracles in light of Christ's big feeding is that miracles can be small. God doesn't just work in huge miracles, but in little ones. I sometimes wonder, why don't we have miracles like we see in Scripture? Why aren't people being healed before us? Why can't I, as the pastor, just touch someone and have them healed? I don't know. But I think the right answer to that wondering is probably that there are miracles happening all the time if we will let God open our eyes and ears. If we pay attention with the help of the Holy Spirit, there are miraculous things around us at all time. Not just big ones, but small ones. It's not just that God feeds an amphitheater full of people, but it is just as miraculous when one family is fed, like with Elijah, or when a hundred people are fed, like with Elisha. And I think we can see <laughs> miracles around us all the time. I can remember uh, March of 2020, <laughs> this coronavirus thing was happening. And I remember uh, at that time we thought, well, this might be a month, a couple months, maybe. And I remember talking to Hank Kirkpatrick, the chair of the church council, and our other leaders, Carolyn Allen and David Hadley and whoever else. We didn't know if we could make it a month. We made it a lot longer than a month. We're still here. And people have never ceased being faithful, never ceased supporting the mission of the church. It's miraculous. We didn't know if we could make it a month, and here we are years later. Someone pointed out in church council, we're having some repairs on the parsonage that are going to be expensive. Uh, the church needs your support, and I hope you will consider... Um, continuing to give and specially support the church. But someone in church council said, God always finds a way. We always manage. It's not a big miracle. The bank roll isn't full. We don't have uh, 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 plenty of, of financial help coming in. 
but we always find the jar just full enough. That's a miracle. And from that COVID pandemic, something else miraculous has happened, which is God helped us open our hearts to other people to use our building to feed others. I hope you will learn more about Stone Soup, follow them on social media. I'll try to share one of their posts. And it is miraculous that this uh, uh, group that feeds hundreds of people every week has sprung up around us. Um, but also the way they get by week to week. Um, they begin every week saying, what do we have in the freezer? What did someone give us? And from there, preparing not just food, but food that looks beautiful, food that's meant to sustain people. It's, it's miraculous and incredible. And so, I want to remember this week as we conclude uh, Food Month, we've been talking about, um, Christ is always with us and has always been with us, and that God is working miracles even today. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. God bless.